just greet his people. So, Oba, talk to Can he? He wants to. Oh, yes. I know. May I ask everyone to stand on your feet? Uh, the elders of the church, members of the church, the children, women of the church. distinguished chiefs that have accompanied me here today. <clears throat> members, members of the royal family. I want to thank you all. I want to thank you all for this honor. 
when um, when I received the invitation to this occasion, I looked at it and God spoke to me immediately, I must be here. Almighty, omnipotent, omniscience, omnipresence. We do osado doa akpama oko do do osagbaye. Said, directed. That I must be here with everybody today. And then I said, uh, when I heard the, the, the voice of God Almighty, I said, I have to listen to the, God, to the word of God. <laughs> On my way here, I asked uh, the secretary to BTC, Frank, <laughs> said, uh, what am I supposed to do today? Because this will be, the, I think, the very first time. <laughs> it will be the very first time that... Uh, I will be attending the Pentecostal Church of God Almighty. Since uh, ascension to the throne, which God Almighty has graciously put me. I've always known it, uh, it is not by my power, it's not by the power of man. It's by the power of God Almighty that has led me from birth to the throne. As everybody else, you may not know it, we all have our challenges here and there. But can I assure you that with faith in God Almighty, you will overcome all those challenges. You must overcome all those challenges because God Almighty is on your side. He's, he's in front of you. He's behind you. He's on your side. He sleeps with you when you are sleeping. When you are waking, he's with you. When you are traveling in the air, on the high seas, on the land, God Almighty is with you. If you believe in him, must believe in him. We have always believed in God Almighty in Benin Kingdom. So um, I want to thank Reverend Omobude for inviting me here today. They have always come to the palace to pray every year unfailingly. I would uh, want to thank Reverend Mobude, this church, and all the other Pentecostal churches, other churches that have come every year to pray for us in the palace. I do uh, <laughs> And so today, today is the day of this church that my ancestors have ordained, God Almighty have ordained that I should be here to celebrate with you. 
But when I came in here and I looked at Reverend Omobude as always, how sharp he is, how sharp he dresses, how sharp he, how, how sharp he dresses and looks. I know he's the, he's the he's God Almighty that is glowing around. <laughs> but but uh, but I then thought to myself, are you, I usually hear the way I am described as the Oba Benin as uh, the swagalicious of <laughs> so, so I was so I was so I was I was wondering I was wondering no matter how sharp and uh, smart he may be he cannot be more swagalicious than me <laughs> But that is by the power of God Almighty. I thank Reverend Omobude and I thank all members uh, of the church. I want to thank Reverend Omobude for the encomiums. I want to thank Reverend Omobude for the recognition of our work which we have been doing. I want to thank everybody, thank the international community that have that have come to the palace several times from different embassies on behalf of different governments, uh, British government, American government, United States, Germany, and, and so on and so forth. The, the rec most recent one was from Denmark, the ambassador of Denmark, who came and poured a lot of encomiums on us. To me, we thought we were simply doing our duty not realizing that we have perhaps uh, we have gone miles beyond the call of duty as far as they are concerned, but it's still work in progress. Amen. By the power of God, it's still work in progress. Let me quickly let me quickly say this: the last time I stood before a congregation, not as big as this was when I was, in, when I was ambassador in Rome. Part of their tradition there is any new ambassador will be invited during October 1st celebration to come and talk to the Catholic, uh, Catholic diocese, Nigerians that are there, the Nigerian Catholics that are there, to address them, to talk to them. So I was invited the usual way. So I said, oh my God, I should come and address, I should address the, uh, the Catholic uh, uh, congregation. <laughs> what, am I, what am I going to say to this, uh, to this uh, congregation? So it took my mind to the Bible, to that part of the Bible where Moses went to Mount Sinai. Was it Mount Sinai? Went, went to Mount Sinai when he was asked to go and free his people in uh, Egypt. And he said, God, what am I going to say when I get there? That Pharaoh is hard, is difficult, is hard, his heart is hard. I'm scared. What am I going to say to him? Will he listen? Will he accept what I'm going to say to him? My mind was taken to Mount Sinai, not by myself, but again, by the Spirit of God. And uh, I now remembered that God told Moses, you should go. Whatever you are going to do, say, there, you will put it in your, put it in your mouth. Whatever you are going to do, you put it in your hand. Oh, everything should be okay. Just go. Do what I say. So I said, the uh, I called, uh, I called my secretary, please uh, go and get me a bigger version of the Bible. <laughs> let, me, let me study study some other aspects of it before I can talk to this congregation. Because I'm here as an ambassador, not a reverend father or a pastor or anything like that. You know, but I must speak in their language, even if uh, one has to speak in tongues. And then uh, she got me this Bible. I browsed through some aspects that I remembered. 
Maybe, maybe surprising to you that we remember some aspects of the Bible. We do. But I won't tell you how. That's my secret. <laughs> secret. And so I got there. Here we were following. I was also, every, every time I said anything, I would look behind me to the elders of the, of the, of the Catholic uh, church there. I hope I'm saying the correct thing. I hope I'm saying the right thing. One of the things, one of the things that I, I, won't say, I don't know if to say preached about, but at least spoke about, was the issue of prostitution, Nigerians, women prostituting in Italy. The problem of prostitutes in Italy. Just like uh, our good reverend mentioned a while ago, you know, our fight against human trafficking, illegal migration, uh, this con continuous forced exodus of our young girls to, uh, to Europe, to Italy, and other European countries to prostitute and bring bad money to their parents and so on and so forth. We have been concerned about it since then. Because as I sat on my desk as ambassador, I know all the details of the, the, uh, the, the information that passed through my desk of many of such young women that were arrested, that were repatriated, and so on and so forth. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. So I, I now recognize the work of the Catholic Church the work of the Catholic Church in rehabilitating many of those prostitutes that decide to stay out of out of out of the street, off the street, stay out of the profession. They had the committee, they had a body within the Catholic Church that would do everything possible to rehabilitate them. So when the uh, Reverend Mobude was speaking a while ago. My mind went through all that. Uh, some of the things he said gave me the impression that you must have a, a similar body in this church that would fight against human trafficking, that would rehabilitate those that were in the trade, that wish to leave the trade, that wish to leave the trade without, without uh, stigmatizing them without stigmatizing them. Because as I said to the Catholics in Rome, I told them, if, if, what, if, I, if I'm making any, any, any mistake in what I'm saying, they should please forgive me, because after all, we are in the house of forgiveness. <laughs> so I say the same thing here now. So if there's anything that I may say that is out of line, the same thing should please apply. But my prayer is that the church should do its best to rehabilitate those that wish to not go to Italy, that not go to um, European countries for greener pastors, make this place attractive to them, create jobs, create um, skills, skills acquisition, and so on and so forth. The church has a big role to play. In that, uh, in that regard. So I, I, thank, I, I want to thank Reverend Mobude again for, for the recognition in the work we did in stamping out CDA, CDA which uh, CDA which, which is supposed to stand for Community Development Association became Community Destructive Association. It was the very next month after my coronation that I came out and grabbed the bull by the horn and said, well, if nobody will do it, it falls on, it falls on us. By the grace of God, by the power of God Almighty, to do it. Make peace to reign in this land. And so, it was... Uh, it was not planned, 
Iya say is there. It was Iya say that I even um, I wanted to. Uh, I, want, I had mandated Iya say on that occasion to speak. Then again, I <laughs> I hear the voice of God and my ancestors directing me to go do it. Not Iya say should do it. I should go speak to the people myself. And when I came out and I spoke. Lo and behold, and I, th I thank God Almighty, I thank my great ancestors, and I thank the people of Benin, I thank Edo people for responding positively to that call. I thank you very much. Please, you must continue to uphold these tenets, these good principles to ensure that our, our kingdom, our land is seen again. It's already been seen as a as good place to come to, as a, as a tourist destination. It's a good tourist destination now. We want to do more. It's still work in progress. We should not fold our arms or rest on our oars and, and lay back. There is still a whole lot more work we have to do. A whole lot more work to make sure Politicians as well do not destroy our land. <laughs> we do not want, we, don't, we, we, we have labored, our ancestors have labored, there's a, you know, there, to get, to get a dual state to where we are. Uh, there is this uh, part of the national anthem, uh, labors of our heroes past shall not be in vain. You know, we have had the, the we, are, we, we know the students of history that are here, we remember what Anthony Nahoro did. Uh, Anthony Nahoro did. Our, our, our great grandfather, Omonobai of Orame. You made sacrifices. Made sacrifices. Our our our, our great our grandfather, Omona Kenzoa, made more sacrifices. And uh, so did my father. So did my father and many other good politicians that means that to get a dose state to where we are. Uh, we, are in the, we are in the church, so I'm not going to talk politics. I'm not a politician, but mine is to say we are praying, and the church should pray, should pray hard. Even if we have to fast when we enter the new year, we all fast. We will all fast. We all fast and pray to God to please bring peace to these politicians that are tearing themselves apart. I've, I have never seen such a thing before. I'm sure many of you, <laughs> you feel the same way. But no, 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 no worry. I'm sure that uh, God Almighty is not sleeping. 